Hey guys, how you doing? I'm back again with another video that I promised you before. This time I'm going to be showing you the differences between an OEM jet pump and an aftermarket SBT jet pump for a 2006 Sea Dew Sportster. Uh, this jet pump did come out of a supercharged intercooled 215 horsepower model. Um, it's about you know 16, 17 years old now. I ended up having one of the seals fail in it and it filled up with salt water back here. And rather than go through the hassle of rebuilding it because this pump was older, um, it does have some, you know, just some scarring and stuff. I'm starting to see some of the veins back here start to uh, succumb to a little bit of corrosion, but overall it's, it's not bad. It definitely could be rebuilt, but I just didn't feel like spending the money to do that. So what I ended up doing was going to SBT and I bought a pre-assembled jet pump assembly here. So I'm going to show you a couple of the little differences here uh, between the two, uh, maybe some benefits, maybe some not so beneficial things about it, but we're going to get started on it. So the first thing that you're going to notice with this is that the SBT one has six holes pre-drilled here. The factory one has three, and that's because the older style pump cone was made for these. Now you can still use this pump cone here on this jet pump, but the main difference is you're not going to have these raised edges here that are kind of smooth transitions of the water flowing over it once you put this down on it that hard edge right there is just going to be hanging over here so if you use the new style pump cone you can see here that it does have one hole that's a little bit off it's asymmetrical it doesn't form a, a perfect triangle like the old school one does but it does fit on here they're the same size same length same diameter it's just a different type of material it's a little bit harder than the older one um, so you can you can just use whichever one you want you can see overall that the pump is a, a little bit different mainly you know some of the casting is a little bit different these are a little bit thinner here but this is very uh, much like my 2020 rxtx2 uh, rxtx 300 jet pump from the factory um, it does have a little bit different of a water pickup here you see it's got a plug here um, you can see that the sbt does use the newer style shaft where it has a nut on the back of it here to secure the impeller shaft to the bearing rather than it being pressed in like on the old style that uses a 12 millimeter here also this little piece here um, would go into a vise or you can hold it with a crescent wrench to be able to remove or torque down your uh, impeller to it one uh, i'm actually going to point out two other things um, that you're going to want to know if you do buy one of these number one these holes that are here for your longer M8 1.25 bolts that hold on your reverse bucket bracket and your Venturi and the steering nozzle to the jet pump, um, the factory ones are going to be too long for this. They do, at least on this one, they did not uh, tap these holes far enough down to where the bolts would not bottom out. Um, so what I ended up doing is going to Amazon and I bought some uh, 100 millimeter M8 1.25 bolts. It was like $10 for a pack of five of them. They are stainless steel, um, just like ones that you could get at a hardware store. Um, but because of them being a little bit longer, hardware stores typically don't have anything that long. Uh, so I went ahead and got those and put them on here. Everything's fine. It works great. Um, you know, and if you need to replace those bolts, those are actually cheaper than the factory ones anyways. The factory ones are like eight, nine dollars for one of them. Um, so another thing that you want to know as well is that this nut here is was not pre-torqued from the factory from SBT. So that nut actually has to be torqued down to 92 foot pounds. And the way to do that, you're actually going to install the impeller on it first. And once you get your impeller installed, you use this into a vise here and you torque everything down. Then you're going to put the torque, or I'm sorry, put your impeller tool in here, put it on a vise, 30 millimeter socket for that. Uh, torque the nut down to 92 foot pounds as well and then you're good to go i learned that the hard way number one they don't tell you um i had ended up having to go to one of the groups and someone told me about it number two um uh, the way that i ended up learning about this is that i had taken it out ridden it for about 45 minutes one day i just had a, a different impeller in it i just wanted to take it out on the water and uh went and hung out with some friends didn't drive very far came back home uh, took it back out because I was getting ready for my uh, repitched impeller to go back in it when I took it out took the pump cone off of it um, Or didn't take the pump cone off. I'm sorry when I when I took out the, the jet pump from this uh, the boat the impeller shaft and the impeller were moving back and forth um, and 
I thought it was a manufacturer defect. I thought the pump had already gone bad, whatever. And I uh, called SBT and uh, they told me I could send it in even though there was no warranty on it, that I could still send it in and they would check it out for me. And um, it ended up being, I had someone telling me uh, that these just are not pre-torqued and I believe that they should have put something in the box to let you know, but nevertheless, they didn't. So um, it is what it is. I got it taken care of and everything's good, but that's why I'm here uh, giving you guys this video so you can kind of learn from my mistakes and, and see what I'm talking about here. So we'll flip it over and you can just see general appearance. They're a little bit different. The casting's different. Um, this is more universal. This pump will actually, like I said, it'll go on to a brand new jet ski that comes from Sea-Doo. Uh, the one thing that you may not know is that Sea-Doo doesn't change their, their jet pump assembly depending on the, the ski, what they end up doing is they change the wear ring diameter and the impeller diameter. So for an RXTX 300, it would be the same pump, but the wear ring is gonna be 161 millimeter inside diameter and the impeller is gonna be 161 millimeter outside diameter. Uh, with this one being an older supercharged intercooled, it is a 159 millimeter pump. So 159 millimeter impeller, 159 millimeter inside diameter wear ring. Which brings me to my next point about these is that the main thing that I noticed was um, trying to install a new wear ring into here. I had to take the factory one out from SBT that they had put into it. It was a hard plastic. I wasn't able to just throw the pump into the freezer and slide it out like I could with the factory one. The reason was because they have one and then on the back side of the wear ring, it's very smooth. So it was essentially forming a vacuum in here. Uh, I had to cut it out, not a problem. Used a, um, a plastic welding tool and just melted through it one little section right there uh, put a little plastic pry bar down into it and just wedged it out released the tension off of it it slid right out um, the other thing is that this pump does not have a beveled edge so you can see on these it has a beveled edge right here and then the wear ring also has a beveled edge on it so when you set that down into it and you push it into it it just promotes it it being able to be pressed into here a lot easier. This one has a straight edge on it. It was much more difficult to put into here. I don't have a press. I didn't want to go down to uh, a shop that I use regularly. I just wanted to get it done, did it in my garage. And I was able to, you know, hammer it down, put a piece of plyboard over it, hit it with a mallet and got it in there. But it was much more difficult to do on this one than that one. Um, so that is a major difference that I noticed with that. So just be aware of that if you do end up going with one of these. One benefit that I do like about this is number one that it does have the upgraded shaft uh, or the updated shaft on it and another thing is that with the older style pump if you're going to upgrade to an aftermarket impeller you would have to use specifically an SRX like from Solus okay um, and this is what the back of an SRX impeller looks like you can see it's nice and flat right here so you had to use one of these this is an SRZ impeller, and you can see that it has, you know, a cutout here. So in order to use one of these impellers on the old style pump, is you have to have like a metal washer that goes in here um, that's supplied, and that way it'll fill in that gap, and it'll keep the back of the hub here, I'm sorry, the back of the impeller from bottoming out inside of the, the impeller hub. If you tried to use this impeller inside of here, once you torque it down, you cannot turn it. You will damage the pump. You will damage here. You will end up locking up stuff. It'll cause all kinds of issues. You do not want to use an SRZ in these. Uh, you have to use an SRX. However, in the new pump here, you can use either one. I don't, I don't really understand how it's possible, but I put it in there, just tested it, see if it would fit. It cleared it. Then put an S, and then this is actually an SRX in here, and the gap between the hub and the back of the impeller is the same distance. So I don't really know what they changed. It's very interesting me, to me that it works, but it does. At least it did on this one. So I would advise with caution, just make sure if you do try to put an SRZ in one of these, you just check it and make sure that when you you know, put it on by hand and when you turn it, it spins freely. Uh, once you torque it, it doesn't turn a whole lot once you put the torque on here. I mean, it, you're talking like maybe a quarter of a turn and you're at 92 foot pounds after you put this down the hand tight. So, um, you know, that was one of the benefits for that. So um, that's really all that I have for you guys. I just wanted to break that down for you, a couple of the differences. And um, I am still going to rebuild this one with OEM stuff and clean up the pump a little bit better. Um, this one does have, unfortunately, all Chinese internals. You can look at the bearings and they say China on them. So how long are they going to last? 
I don't know. Um, if it does end up failing, of course, I'm going to share that information with you guys because I want you to know what you're going to expect out of these. One last point, and I'll, I'll end the video, is that to rebuild this one with a new wear ring that I needed, um, new shaft, new bearings, new everything inside of here that I needed to rebuild it, it was going to be about $300 shipped. This pump shipped $500 with tax because I live in Florida and SBT is in Florida, right? So if you were to get this, rebuild it, you've got $300 worth of stuff that you're going to end up putting into it with a new wearing. And then you've got to have the time to do it, the tools to do it. And there are uh, some special, you know, tools to press in the bearings and press in the impeller shaft um, that you may or may not need. I don't know. I didn't try to do it. Um, I would assume there's, there's got to be ways to get around that. But if you didn't need the tools and you were going to do it yourself, those are like another $100 for the tools or maybe more that you need for it. Then you have to have a hydraulic press to do it as well. If you ended up taking it to the shop, uh, you're going to look at between an hour to two hours for them to rebuild it. And right now, labor, I've seen it anywhere between $100 to $120 an hour at a shop. So then that includes you having to take it down to a shop and have it done. So if you have basic tools, have a vise or something that you can tighten down that nut on here or even put it on the floor and do it. If you, you want to try to do that, you could do this one at home, have it torqued down, ready to go, 500 bucks, you're in the game. It does have a wear ring in it, but it is not the factory one. I wasn't too big of a fan of it. It was a harder plastic. Um, did seem like it would wear out quicker, but it did have one in it. Um, so that's all that I have for you guys, and I appreciate you watching. And if I, uh, you can think of a video that you would like to see with the boat or even anything with my jet ski, just let me know, and I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks, guys.